Welcome to Macap TV. Don't forget to share, subscribe, and like. Let's hit right into it. Today's topic is Arise and Shine African Leaders. Once again, I'll hit on the topic. It's captioned Arise and Shine African Leaders. Okay, let's get right into it. I'll first of all define wisdom. And second of all, define fool. And third of all, define corruption. And after that, we'll get right into it. Stay tuned. Okay. The definition of wisdom, wise, it states that having or showing experience knowledge and good judgment again i repeat having or showing experience knowledge and good judgment okay just a minute just want to check if everything is working all right yeah everything is fine so again i repeat the definition of wisdom wise it states having or showing experience knowledge and good judgment i repeat having or showing experience knowledge and good judgment okay please can you follow me and make sure that all these um stuff that i'm talking about is properly um noted so that you understand when we get along with the program today so um second sensible or prudent having knowledge in specific subject okay that's wisdom wise okay let's see meaning of fool okay a person who acts unwisely or imprudently imprudently a silly person anyway let's get on with it a person who acts unwisely or imprudently or a silly person right so let's get into the next one So take note of all these meanings. I know you, you do understand, my viewers. Um, have a very good weekend, but just stay tuned and let's see how it goes here. So corruption, meaning of corruption. Dishonest or fraudulent conduct by those in power, typically involving bribery. The second one says, the process of which a word or expression is changed from the original state to one regarded as erroneous or debased. Let's go to the first definition again. Dishonest or fraudulent conduct by those in power, typically involving bribery. All right. So at least we've got it all covered um, in terms of the three words that I want us to um, deliberate about. So let's get on with it. I'll start with a story. You know, when parents are at home, they make sure the family is functioning properly. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes. When one or both of the parents are not doing what they are supposed to do in terms of their responsibility and commitment and devotion to the family, it will look as if that the family is dysfunctioning so sometimes we call it dysfunctional families it means the mechanisms that are supposed to work in conjunction with the rules and regulation of a family or a domestic home is not in place so it means the structures have what broken down let's give an example let's say a parent or a dad uses his money to gamble and then leave the rest of the family starving 
they don't have food to eat because the head of the family has squandered their money in a very frivolous and unwise manner. So what happens? The kids suffer, the kids suffer, and the wife suffers. You understand my point? So I'm trying to draw an analogy that you guys should just um, reason with me on that track so that you understand where I'm going to. So, once this is done, when the head of the family um, starts misbehaving like that financially and even start abusing uh, the family members um, physically and all that, it gets to a point that everybody in the house starts misbehaving. So they suffer from starvation, they suffer financially, emotionally, physically, and even educationally because they can't go to school, especially where we come from, how are your school fees going to be paid? Because the, 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 the main person in the family or the head of the family is what? Is misappropriating funds. You get what I'm saying? So that is the analogy that I'm trying to make here. And then we carry on to the next point. Okay, so that is on the bed side. Now, you know Charlie begins at home and every infant or every child grows into an adult. So the next generation of adulthood or the next generation of adults is coming from the youth. So the youth are going to be the next generation. Are you getting my point? So I'm trying to build my point step from step one to step two for you to understand where I'm coming from. So, though my topic today is dubbed Arise and Shine African Leaders, is the youth that grow to become adults and to become leaders. And charity begins at home when the virtues are properly instilled in them from the beginning or at home, that is when they grow up to become responsible and accountable adults. So yes, so you see where I'm coming from. We're building an app. Okay, so now we've defined corruption, we've defined wisdom, we've defined foolishness. Right, okay, let's get it going. So these youth become adults, and then as leaders, they start misbehaving. And I'm not going to talk about the melanin effect today, the black magic power molecules that is in us as black people. You understand my point? But I'm going to hit from that perspective that I started from so that you guys will understand where I'm going. Okay. So now what I'm saying is that if a leader in Africa, all over, you know, that continent, that beautiful continent, enriched with minerals and oils and, and, and elements and vegetation, you know, you name it, we, we, are, we are rich. So if these leaders of Africa starts doing corruption, right, and start embezzling money that are supposed or meant for the whole public or for the whole community and leave the rest of the population starving, unemployment rising, schools not being built, health, education and everything is pear-shaped, everything is not going on as it is. What I want to prove today is that when corruption and greed combines do you know what it's called? It's called foolishness. Do you know why it's called foolishness? Because if you are greedy and you are corrupt, you think about yourself and selfishness. Let me add selfishness to it. You think about yourself, greed, the money that is supposed to go into projects that the individuals or the, the citizens of the countries should engage in and benefit from, right? It goes into one person or their family, which means you are starving a whole millions of people by the greed and what? The corruption. So which means corruption plus greed is equal to foolishness. 
because it means you are not wise it's like running your own home if you misappropriate funds at home and you allow your kids not to go to school and to starve and to lead a very horrible life and to have that dysfunctional family it means that individual or that parent is not wise so as um, leaders if a leader is greedy greedy and corrupted it means that leader is foolish because you are not thinking ahead you are not thinking about the next generation of your own you know um, people or, or even your own family because if you are thinking about it, your own self then it means you are very selfish and greed plus corruption is foolishness because you are not even thinking straight you are not a leader a leader has got a vision and a leader is wise and a leader has got that prudence a leader has got that assertiveness a leader has got that proactiveness a leader has got that power to sort of do things that will, will, will benefit the public that will benefit the citizen that will benefit the family not even one person alone so african leaders what i'm trying to say is that please let's dig into the the, the pockets of, of of the wisdom of god or the wisdom of the creator that has been endowed in everybody everybody has got it but greed and corruption blinds and folds everybody blindfolds everybody where we come from greed and corruption is equal to foolishness i've said it so many times and i'm going to repeat it over and over again so please viewers forgive me for repeating that but wisdom is prudence wisdom is intelligence wisdom is knowledge wisdom is putting the knowledge that you've acquired into practice that is going to benefit people not you alone not selfishness so african leaders the youth that are being trained into adults that are being trained into leaders we really have to be careful of the greed and the corruption that enrages that ravages our societies we really need to think about this we have to think about this very 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 carefully we have to really think about this wisdom emanates from somebody who is ready to help from a visionary you need to have that vision for your country you need to have that vision for your country you need to have that purpose for your country if we engage in greed and corruption that tends out to be foolish foolishness at the end of the day it means we are not helping anybody we are helping ourselves and then the rest suffers how are we going to build our continent how and when are we going to build our continent with this level of greed and corruption in our society how are we going to do that sorry i have to pick something up how are we supposed to do that how are we supposed to build our continent where we come from with a level of greed and corruption that amounts to foolishness one person can siphon the public funds that is capable of building roads building schools building hospitals providing jobs creating jobs for others building factories that is going to employ a whole lot of people building you know powerful amenities and infrastructures that is going to help the public you know benefit from it how are we going to develop as a continent africans we must we we reunite again once again we must unite and have meetings upon meetings on how we will get this whole continent together and even one person in a country can even man or manage 
the administrative affairs of a country how can we even unite the whole africa because one country and their leaders can't even manage and 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 build their country to that limit to that level because when you compare africans to the rest of the world to the rest of the continents like the western world we are 150 and 100 years apart in terms of development and, and, and technology and that how can we bridge that gap? Hundred years, a century, and even hundred and fifty years gap of development and technology. How are we going to bridge that gap unless we do away with greed and corruption and we start thinking outside the box? We start having that wisdom, that projection, that that that, that vision that is going to take us to the next level because we need that next level. To bridge that gap government constitutions that are relevant government constitutions that are you know specific government's constitution that are, are streamlined government guidelines and procedures and laws that are binding that will make sure that there are no corruptions that there are no greedy people that will come and take the money of the nation taxpayers money Africans, please, let's open our eyes. Every country, open your eyes. Start building your nations. Start having proper, you know, um, negotiations with our foreign partners. Proper ones that will benefit us. Not the ones that is conducive for the person that is in that world. Negotiations. They will benefit from it and take that money without helping the society that they are living in or the public or the citizens in that particular country. Let's open our eyes, Africans. Our constitutions all over the continent should be amended so that it's going to be anti-corruption constitution. Let's tell it that way. Anti-corruption constitution so that every member of parliament or every cabinet member will know that no we don't we are not joking in this country we are going to work our ass off to get the country to another level let's think ahead africans let our wisdom rise let's bury greed let's bury greed and corruption because it's not helping anybody the Western countries are developing from, from step A to step B. They are building their roads. They are building their factories. They are building their schools. They are building their amenities. They are building their hospitals. They are building, creating jobs. And we travel to those countries to go and work. Why? Because our leaders are not prudent enough. How can one person take a whole nation's money into their pocket? Nepotism, friends and families, they share. How can it be like that? Africans, let's rise up. Let's rise up. Let's think ab ab above the box. Let's think behind and, and, and above. Let's think outside the box. Let wisdom be our yardstick. And let greed and corruption be a thing of the past. I rest my case. Let's think about these things and let's move on as Africans. Thank you. Mecca TV, I'm back for a short episode in conjunction with just the one I did. Constitution, 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 Constitution. Amendment of Constitution, African continent. Leaders, please. Let's amend our Constitution. A constitution that has got a budget that is smart, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. Let's organize an assessment of SWAT, which is strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats of the country, including security as a, a continent. Because when we don't use the wisdom and we involve in greed and corruption do you know what happens it means that 
we have abandoned the citizens of our nations. And do you know what happens when citizens of a nation are abandoned? The crime rate shoots up. Crime rates on the rise, crime rate hikes up. Because there are no jobs. There are nothing for the youth to engage in. So crime rates rise. The percentage of crime is high when greed and corruption equals to foolishness of our leaders go on the rise. The youth will head back by engaging in criminal activities. So you can understand that continent is full of crime because there are no jobs. Our leaders are not creating enough jobs. Our leaders are not creating enough infrastructures, enough amenities, enough roads, enough hospitals, enough schools, enough um, you know, public facilities, enough factories. They are not, they are not helping the, 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 the population of the country. So crime rate, what, goes up. And every, everybody is, is like the survival of the fittest. Everybody is struggling to make ends meet because our leaders are not prudent enough to put structures in place for the economy to work for everybody. It's like the economy of the African continent works for a few. Works for a few. That's the 1% of the population that has got, you know, uh, access to, you know, this political um, sort of uh, 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 um, things that come to their, to, to their environment in terms of contracts and other stuff. So the 1% are, 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 are you know, are enjoying and the rest of the population are struggling. Let's amend our constitution. Let our constitution be an anti-corruption and uh, constitution that will benefit the mass, not a few. Anti-corruption constitution that will benefit the population, the citizens of the continent of Africa. That will really go far to benefit the population of this continent, of this beautiful continent. Let every country on the continent amend their constitution. That is, will be anti-corruption constitution. So we put structures, proper structures in place that individual budgets of our continent or, or of our countries be very specific, measurable, attainable, achievable, realistic, timely. No overspending of trips of presidents, no overspending of trips of members of parliament, unnecessary trips that we go and spend more money of the country. We put all that resources into something that will benefit everyone. Everyone should benefit. Let the taxpayer benefit from the, the country that they live in, African continent, please. Let's unite. Let's amend our constitution, individual constitution of the countries. Amend it. Anti-corruption constitutions. So that your country will be run in a very tight rope of anti-corruption. Nobody's going to come in and start spending anything anyhow or any finance or funds anyhow. So that the crime rate is going to drop because there will be jobs around. You will create jobs without money that is, it goes into individual pockets. You create jobs with it. You create, you build factories, build manufacturing plants, build a, 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 a plants that produces stuff. That will create jobs so that crime rate is going to come down in Africa. Please, let's think about it. Wisdom. Is the one is the is the key to our victory, not greed, not corruption, not selfishness. Please let's help and uplift Africa one more time. I rest my case. Thank you.